everybody. Praise the Lord and welcome to Nightline. I tell you what, we're going to have an awesome program tonight. We are so thankful to God to be in your homes on this evening. We have some wonderful guests on Nightline with us tonight as we celebrate the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Oh, this is going to be an awesome time in God. We do have some amazing prayer partners on him. We would love Love to hear from you. If you need anything from God tonight, I don't care what it is. It can be salvation. If you're sick in the hospital or if you're just going through anything or you just want to call in and say, I'm enjoying the program, please do not hesitate to call in tonight. We do have an amazing, some amazing guests tonight. We do have an author. Her name is Essie A. Sullivan. She wrote a book, Hold Your Head Up, your self-esteem matters. Hold your head up. Your self-esteem matters. Amen. Praise God. And then we have Pastor Todd Curry. Amen. He is a national recording artist. So I know I, I'm excited to talk with him and, and be with them tonight on Nightline. I do have a, a scripture I want to share for your hearing. It's lifted from Galatians, uh, the third chapter, 28th verse, and it reads, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. We are all one. Amen. Praise God. That's a, a song that we used to sing when we was little. Um, it says, uh, God loves the little children, all the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white. We are all precious in his sight. Isn't that awesome to know tonight that when Jesus hung and bled on the cross, oh my goodness, he hung and bled for all of us. Amen. He had all of us on his mind. Some of us weren't even born over 2,000 years ago, but when he hung there, he said, I got you on my mind. I got you on my mind. I got you on my mind. Amen. We are all precious in his sight. Oh, my God, are we serve an awesome God, a good God. I always say this is a day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. God is amazing, God. I had the opportunity a few weeks ago to meet this amazing, powerful woman of God. Her name is Dr. Alveda King. I met her at, and I did an interview with her. Uh, she is a civil rights activist, she's an author, she's an actress, and she is a songwriter. Not only that, but she is the niece of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So let's go to the roll in right now. Amen. Praise God. And then after that, we're going to have a song by Pastor Todd Curry and the ministry choir. He's worthy. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. We are at the um, Greenville Convention Center. Um, for a Christian Learning Center Power Lunch. And I tell you what, we are going to have an amazing time this, today. I have the honor and the privilege of interviewing Evangelist Alveda King. Um, Evangelist King um, is well known to everybody. She's a blessed and amazing woman of God. She's a civil rights activist. She's a pro-life activist, author, actress, songwriter, She's the daughter of the late uh, slain civil rights activist, Reverend A.D. King, and, the wife, and his wife, Naomi Barber King. Also, she is the niece of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Praise the Lord, everybody. I am Annie T. Broughton, and I am the host for Nightline. To God be all the glory. Evangelist King, thank you so much. <laughs> Pastor Annie, it's wonderful to be here with you. Your smile, oh the joy God. that's in you is just uh, contagious. It's marvelous. <laughs> it's wonderful to be here with you at this time for this Women's Power Lunch. Yeah. And uh, it's just amazing. I've met some beautiful Christian people while I was here. Yeah. And uh, it's just great. Thank you so much. Uh, I have read so many wonderful things about you. And I when I had this opportunity to, to interview you, my heart was made glad. Um, Evangelist King, can you share, I know I shared a little bit about you, but can you share with us some more details about you, what God is doing in your life? Well, blessedly, I was raised in a Christian family, 
and that's the family of Daddy King and Mama King, Martin Luther King Sr. in Alberta. Mm -hmm. My parents, A.D. King and Naomi, Daddy was a preacher and a civil rights warrior during his lifetime, and then his brother, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King uh, Jr., you see. So mm -hmm. I was raised, and there's a beautiful scripture, train up a child yes. in the way that child should go, and when the child grows up, the child will not depart, yes. or at least come back, yes. and, I, and I did that. I, in my younger lifetime, I did have some secret abortions and things like that, yeah. but the Lord healed me. Yes. Uh, he has forgiven me, healed me. I have six living children and a lot of grandchildren, and I use all those creative things that you mentioned, songwriting and acting <laughs> and activists, and I've been in the political world. Yeah. You know, right behind me, I hear that music, hallelujah, hallelujah, <laughs> and the choir's warming up. And so uh, that's who I am, and I became born again in 1983. Yeah. And since that time, I've been running hard for Jesus. Well, you know, when I saw you coming down the hallway, uh, I could see the joy of the Lord in you. Thank you. And the Word of God says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes. 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 Um, I want to ask, is God a forgiving God? God is such a forgiving God. I put a little stack of cards in my suitcase today, and I'll try to make sure I get one and give it to you. Okay. And it shows Jesus Christ holding <laughs> up a, a young man who has just been beaten by life. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people will feel that we're just not worthy. Yeah. God can't forgive this. God, yes. John 3, 16 <laughs> is for everybody. Yes. And it actually doesn't matter what kind of life you have, because yes. you could always be born again. Yes. And in that born again experience is that joy, that forgiveness. I've been forgiven for many, many, many things. Yes. And uh, it, it helps me to judge others less when they yes. do things. Because yes. isn't there a scripture too, it says you see your brother, or we say a sister, overtaken in a fault. Yes. Restore them before <laughs> you fall in that ditch. Yes. Amen. So that's the God we serve. That's the God we serve. Uh, one thing that I feel like the Lord wanted me to share with you, a scripture that's just for you, for Thank today. You. Thank you. And it's Jeremiah 1 and 4. He says, Alveda, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew you. Before you came out of the womb, I had already ordained you oh to goodness. be a priest and a prophet Praise to God. the nations. Praise God. Thank you, sweet woman of God. Thank you. For being with us on Nightline this evening. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity, this privilege of meeting you. And I pray nothing but blessings, the blessings of the Lord to follow you all the days of your life in thank the name you. of Jesus. Well, that was Dr. Alfreda King. And I thank God for this wonderful opportunity to have interviewed her for Nightline. And I just pray nothing but the blessings for you in Jesus' name, amen. Oh my God, I was so excited and so delighted to interview Dr. Alveda King. She is a sweetheart and she has the heart of God. She has a heart after God's heart. And I thank God for her for being on Nightline with us tonight as we celebrate the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Right now we're getting ready to go to Todd Curry and the ministry choir singing He's Worthy. Amen. <laughs>
Oh my God, so as you can see tonight, we're going to have a uh, wonderful and an awesome time tonight on Nightline. Uh, that was Pastor Todd Curry singing, He's Worthy. So one thing I want you to know at home tonight, that God is worthy. Amen. He's Amen. worthy of all our praise, all of our love, all of our adoration. I thank God that He is worthy. <laughs> right now, we're getting ready to go to our amazing guest tonight. I am so honored. And so pri privileged to be able to uh, interview this awesome young woman of God. She wrote a book, Hold Your Head Up, Your Self-Esteem Matters by Essie A. Sullivan. Amen. Praise God. So, Miss Sullivan, thank you for thank being with us on Nightline tonight. Yes, thank you so much, Ellie, <laughs> for having me. It's just a privilege and a joy to be with you. Amen. I, I am so... Um, <laughs> delighted to just talk to you about your book. But first of all, uh, I understand that you are a mother. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're an author. Mm -hmm. You have your master's degree mm -hmm. in business administration. And I, uh, and I concentrated in accounting. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so all my work has been in finance. And I had the opportunity uh, last year, I think it was, to meet your son. He was on Nightline yes, with us. And he was one of the graduates that we had out here. Absolutely. Uh, Lee, he's in his senior year at USC Upstate working on his uh, engineering and electronic degree. So yeah. he's a senior this year. Awesome. So we're just really excited about that. He the is, is a doing. handsome young man and uh, you are a beautiful young woman of oh, God. Well, thank you. Yes. Thank you indeed. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Before we talk about your book, is there anything in particular you want to share about yourself, um, what God has been doing in your life? Well, um, I tell you, God is so good. I, I accepted Christ when I was 13. Yeah. And so, uh, actually, I've been walking with the Lord now for uh, over 46 years. Yeah. And I just thank the Lord for what he's doing and who he is in my life. Yeah. And I just bless the name of the Lord for being here indeed. And I tell you, um, I am actually uh, locally from Abbeville, South Carolina, mm -hmm. and we moved here to Greenville, South Carolina, and uh, now the Lord has blessed me to be able to write a book and yeah. author a book, and sometime out of our greatest pain become our greatest blessing. Oh, say that yes. one more time. Somebody so, need to hear that at home. Yes. Say that one more sometime time. Sometime out of our greatest pain become our greatest blessing. Oh, my goodness. Because sometimes we don't know that God is actually doing a new thing in the valley and in the pain. And when we go through, that, uh, through those travailing moments, we don't know that God is birthing something new into our lives. Yes, he is. And I'm so thankful. <laughs> for the be able to see that God has actually brought a book like Hold Your Head Up. Oh, your yeah. self-esteem matters because you see, uh, your self-esteem matters because God have already approved of you. Mm -hmm. He has already said yes to you yeah. based on him dying on the cross yes. in the name of the Lord. So yeah. I just thank the Lord for who he is, but I am just so excited <laughs> to be with you and to to have talking you. about this here awesome book and my book ministry is towards women in particular. Yeah. Uh, although I believe that self-esteem is for everyone, yeah. but it is in particularly for women because I know I'm a woman and I have been able to experience God's blessing and healing wow, beyond God. of the voice. Praise and so now I'm here to represent Christ to let you know that there's healing for you as well. Yeah. And you can start over. You know, uh, I love uh, the book of Deuteronomy, uh, the 28th chapter, when it says we are the head mm -hmm. and not the tail. Mm -hmm. We are over and not beneath. Absolutely. Yeah. So when you said hold your head up, mm -hmm. really, you're just saying 
go ahead and be in a position where mm -hmm. God have already placed us in. Yes. He said we're the head, so hold that head up. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> hold your head up because your self-esteem does matter yeah. because you are important to God. Yeah. Uh, and the reason why you are important to God because he's seen fit to send you here into the earth yeah. to make a contribution to the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so he wants you to hold your head up and know that your self-esteem is important and that you are somebody in him. Yeah. And he made you to be important. Yeah. Yes. So um, what, what do you feel like, I know what the dictionary describes self-esteem is, mm -hmm. but what do you think... Well, I read self I written the book on self esteem because self esteem is how we feel about ourselves. Oh, okay. How we view mm -hmm. ourselves, what are our core values. Okay. You know, how Christ see us yeah. and how we see ourselves inside of Christ. Uh-huh. And so uh, the way I was able to learn about self esteem and of course, you know, when you go through these different trials and tribulations mm. and you <laughs> come through them, not on your own but on the grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ and through his word, yeah. he was able to show me from Psalms 139, yeah. uh, 14, which says, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth it right well. Yeah. And so through that particular verse, he let me know that I am important to him. Yes. And that we all are important to him as the children of the Lord. Yeah. You know, and that we make up the whole to the whole as far as the circle of life. Yeah. And so he wants us to understand that because he loves us so much so mm -hmm. that he went to the cross to die on, uh, for yes, our he did. sins and to redeem us back to the Lord Jesus Christ. So how long did it take you to sit and pen your book? Uh, it may have taken me, I think, about a little over two years. Mm -hmm. And during that time, I went through the struggle of, you know, actually going through a job separation and all that sort of thing. But mm -hmm. the Lord was using all that to groom me, to be yeah. able to write this book. Yeah. So I'm thankful for that. But it took me about two years mm -hmm. to write the book. Uh, you know, when you are writing the book, sometimes you ask yourself, uh, you know, do I really want to do this? Yeah. And then you feel like, oh my goodness, you know, the struggle and the pain through it sometimes can feel so hard at mm. times because some bit, so many obstacles can be coming against you to the point that you feel like, oh my goodness, do I complete this? Yeah. But then the Lord will send someone to encourage you or he give you good? a new scripture, <laughs> you know, to continue to push you forward, yeah. you know, because God is an action moving God. Yes, he you is. You know, and he wants us to move Thanks. forward and to know that he has given us these abilities yeah. to be able to do what we need to do and things of that such. And also, I just want to share, no, share. Uh, Psalms 139, uh, 17 and 18 that goes along with mm -hmm. Psalms 139, 14. Okay. Uh, it says, How precious also are thy thoughts unto me. O God, how great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they are more in number yes. than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. <laughs> so uh, the Lord, uh, the psalmist talks about that the thoughts that the Lord have of us are so precious. He mm. constantly thinks of us all the time. Yes. You know, he's a God you, that Jesus. are infinity. He goes on forever. His thoughts are constantly on Annie. Yes. His thoughts are constantly on Essie. Yes. His thoughts are constantly Thank on you, everyone. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So we just have to know that this here verse is, uh, is in reverence to the Lord thinks of us all the time, regardless. The time. He wants to always, you know, give us his blessing and the best that he has. Yes. And the best was the Lord Jesus Christ yes. as our personal Amen. Savior. Yes. You know, to redeem us back to the Ooh. Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, if I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. So all <laughs> the global sand in the world, all the global global grains of sand in the world yeah. cannot contain the thoughts oh my God. that God thinks of us. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, it's just amazing how God actually loves us so much so. Now, those scriptures of the Lord became even more real to me yeah. when uh, after 18 years of marriage that I, you know, experienced a divorce. Yeah. And through all of that, 
God used these scriptures to rebuild me, to reassure me that I am still somebody in Christ Jesus. Yeah. And I found out that he still loved me. He still <laughs> loves you. Yes, he, he does. He still loves me. Now, I'm not advocating that, you know, divorce or anything like that. I'm not advocating that. I understand. That just have been a part of my struggle yeah. and my life story. Yeah. You know, but I, I am for marriages. I'm for families. You know, yeah. I'm for for you know, the good of what the Lord have for mm -hmm. families, and I bless the name of the Lord for it. Yeah. And things of that such. But these scriptures became real to me mm -hmm. at those particular times. At well, that particular sometimes, time. Sometimes, you know, um, as if we go through stuff in order for God to bring out the best in mm -hmm. us, you know, we go through the trials, mm -hmm. we go through the tribulations. Absolutely. But God is still faithful. <laughs> he promised Amen. that he would never leave us, nor would he forsake us. Amen. Yeah. So after 18 years of marriage, you went through a divorce. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how did that make you feel? Well, I mean, that made me feel put down. It made me feel like, oh, my gosh, you know, I got these three children to raise now. Yeah. And, you know, I had a house to take care of. <laughs> I had a house mortgage. You know, I had a car, you know, I had what bills that come with that yeah. and things of that such. And, and I just cried a lot and I just say, Lord, how in the world am I going to do this? Yeah. How am I, I going to do this? Mm -hmm. You know, because I never intended to be, you know, without a spouse. Yeah. You know, and of course I felt like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to church now, you know, and I got these two little baby boys and I got yeah. a teenager mm -hmm. and, you know, sometime, you know, People are not as kind as they need to be, but, you know, it's okay. <laughs> yes, yes. It's okay. Yes. And so, uh, you know, I felt the shame of that, you mm -hmm. know, because I was from a traditional background, you know, and you just, you know, you just do what you need to do, mm -hmm. you know, to take care of staying together or what have you. But I did feel like my self-esteem had been pushed down. Uh, mm. I felt the shame of, you know, having to even go through all of that. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, the Lord bring us to that place yeah. uh, in our lives where we have to let go and move on. But the Lord has did a new work on me. He has. Yes, he has he done a, a new, new thing, work. Because he? He, <laughs> he said that he's doing a new thing. Yeah. He's doing a new thing. And so he has did a new work beyond that. And so I bless the name of the Lord for that. Yeah. But yes, I felt so alone. I felt ashamed. I felt like, oh my God, can I really do this? Mm -hmm. But I was praying one night and I was crying and the Lord just came into my room and comforted me. He gave me the peace and the assurance wow. that I'm still here. Yes. You know, I never did cry in front of my children because yes. they needed to see the strength of the Lord yes. in me. Yeah. But at the same time, I would just pray and I told the Lord, I say, I'm going to hold on to the word of the Lord with all the hope and faith and yes. courage, all that I can, because the <laughs> word of the Lord is all that I have. Yeah. You know, and so Praise God was God. able to see me through. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it was not easy, but God was faithful, <laughs> and his word is the truth. Woo! And when he say that he can do it, yes. he can do it, yes. and he will. And he will. And he has performed a miracle here in the name <laughs> of the Lord. And, and my children and I, we were just a single family. We, we were not dysfunctional. Yeah. We had a devotion uh, every night. Yeah. I prayed over them every day when I took them to school and things of that such. And I took authority over the enemy, and I bind the enemy in the name yes. of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I always encouraged them through the word of the Lord. I used the Psalms a lot. And all this here is in the book that I'm talking about. Yeah. I used a lot of the Psalms that was age appropriate mm -hmm. uh, to be able to teach them what thus says the Lord. I always let them know that they are important and that I'm raising them to be good, godly uh, citizens mm -hmm. of the Lord Jesus Christ yes. and to make a, a contribution to the world's good. Wow. And so I just always made them feel important. I always mm. talked with them a lot and I just wanted them to understand that they were somebody important. Yes, yeah, somebody. And yes. Yes. And so of course, my daughter's married and have two beautiful little girls. We've got two little beautiful grandbabies. And my son, my middle son, you know, is at USC Upstate. And the, uh, the youngest one, of course, he's serving our country mm -hmm. uh, in the Navy. He's Whoa, the submarine specialist. So I bless the name of the praise Lord God. for them. And, of course, they accepted Christ at an early age as well. Amen. So I bless the name of the Lord for that. 
Awesome. Well, I can tell you have a close relationship with God, yes. that God is thank doing you, such a great work in you and through you, in your spirit. So thank you again for being with us. <laughs> thank you. Uh, we've been really. talking to Miss Essie A. Sullivan. She wrote a book, Hold Your Head Up, Your Self-Esteem Matters. So call somebody and ask them to tune in to Nightline tonight and hear this awesome testimony that this woman of God has given to us. Right now we're getting ready to go to Pastor Todd Curry and the ministry choir. They're going to be singing Overflow. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Oh my God, thank you tonight for tuning to Nightline. God is so 
amazing. He's awesome. And that's one thing I love about Nightline is that we love to share about the love of God, the, the, the power of God, the goodness of God. Amen. And we are talking to uh, Miss Essie A. Sullivan tonight. And, I, and as you can see, we're having a wonderful conversation. She wrote a book, Hold Your Head Up. Can somebody at home just hold your head up tonight? <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Your self-esteem matters. Amen. So we're going to go back to you, Miss Essie. And again, I tell you what, just let God use you tonight. Whatever you want to share, because you got a teacher in you. <laughs> you got a preacher down in, down in that belly. Amen. Praise God. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, you know, the Lord is just so good. The Lord uh, ordained me to become an evangelist. Okay. Uh, back in what 2017 yeah uh, and at the time I was with a local church by the name of will one in the spirit outreach ministries okay and uh, just was so thankful for those pastors that seen you know the gift of the Lord there mm -hmm. and also I was ordained as an intercessor prayer warrior so those are two of the gifts that we know that have been identified wow and I just bless the name of the Lord uh, for uh, Dr. Michael um, Locke yeah. and Prophetess Locke of that particular uh, church. Mm -hmm. And I just bless the name of the Lord for that. And also, uh, I have the Lord, I feel like the Lord has moved me on mm -hmm. at that particular time because now He has birthed a ministry in me for <laughs> women and particularly single women because, um, you know. I am now single, you know, after yeah. 18 years of marriage, yeah. I'm now single, and I just know that God is able to help you to start over in your healing and mm -hmm. in your emotions. Uh, I had a pastor a long years ago, his name, the late uh, Dr. Bobby Randolph, yeah. and he would always say, God heals the emotions. <laughs> And I couldn't quite understand what all that mean, yeah. meant. And I have read, you know, Psalms 139, 14, and 17, and 18 all that time, but it just didn't have no real meaning. Mm -hmm. It just didn't grab me and things of that such. So I thank the Lord for that. And also now I am attending a local church by the name of Change with a Praise Ministry. Okay. And uh, that pastor is Pastor uh, Rick Martin and Pastor Brenda Martin. Oh, okay. And they are, we are out of Simpsonville, South Carolina. Simpsonville. And the power of the Lord is there. Yeah. What's the address? <laughs> Do you know the address? And the address is uh, 1115D Northeast Main Street, Simpsonville, South Carolina. And their name is what now? Uh, pastor uh, Rick Martin. And Pastor Brenda Morton. Hi, Pastor Rick Morton. <laughs> Pastor Brenda Morton. God bless you. Amen. <laughs> yes, and so I just bless the name of the Lord, and I've been attending there for quite some time now. Yeah. And I just bless the name of the Lord for that. And I'm just so thankful for who the Lord is and uh, for the opportunity, you know, for this work yeah. um, here. Um, Essie, when you were separated and divorced from your husband, did you ever pray for him to come back? I, I did. I prayed many a nights, and I cried, you know, and, and, and asked the Lord for him to come back, you mm -hmm. know, and I would even speak to him at different times. Yeah. And, but, you know, uh, sometimes the Lord just don't suffer a person to return. Okay. Uh, I dealt with um, a spirit of perversion with in our marriage and uh, I couldn't ever get it to break. Okay. And you know, when you stand against these tight things, these tight spirits, mm -hmm. they don't give up their host easily. Okay. And then sometimes, you know, these people, these type of spirits can flow through generations, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes they can be Jesus. there dominant and then sometimes certain things happen yeah. to the point that, you know, maybe it's a spouse pass on now that spirit feel like it can run rampant now. Okay. You know, and then so I just seen some major changes there uh, with that. And the more I stood against that, mm -hmm. the more that it just seems like it just was going to take over, you wow. know, my home. Yeah. You know, and, and what's going to eventually, you know, infiltrate 
my children. Right. And I felt like I had to save my children from that. Yeah. You know, because God has called us to a responsibility of righteousness. Mm -hmm. And we are, the things that we do now in obeying the Lord and living by the principles of the Lord, those things going to go on down to the next generation. Okay. And so if we're mm -hmm. not careful, we'll pass down these demonic spirits and wow. uh, pervertedness and all that sort of thing. And we won't think nothing about that because wow. it's done in such a subtle way. And if we are taught wrong as children, we will pick that up as adults. Mm -hmm. And then we will, you know, cater to that. So I have had to ask the Lord to forgive me even for having for getting married to someone that I knew had a low self-esteem in that okay. particular area because I was raised uh, too with a low self-esteem. My parents, you know, they were separated uh, when I was very young. Yeah. And so my father, he was a, an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, you know, he came from an abusive background too. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, uh, I didn't realize that my father had a low self-esteem. So that had already passed to me as far as a low self-esteem. Yeah. So in dealing with that, um, you know, of course, that's resurfaced back in my life through a marriage. Okay. And as we know that sometime, well, this is not my quote, but uh, it's what I heard someone say that if the devil can't get you one way, he'll marry you. Oh. You know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we. My goodness. Yeah, so we just have to, you know, be aware of that. And if there's anything that that particular person, you know, shows you that is ungodly, mm -hmm. you know, don't follow that because yeah. I was so young at the age of 20 when I got married. Okay. You know, and of course my husband was older and, you know, sometimes, you know, you just think you're just kind of sneaking off watching things mm -hmm. and it's okay. But then when you stand against it, cause you know, that's wrong. Okay. When yeah. you stand against it, then sometimes that host is not ready to give up, okay. you know, the person. Yeah. So I felt like, you know, I had to save me from that and I had to save my children from that mm -hmm. because whatever they are, they are learning in that environment, they're going to pick that up and they're going to become like that. Okay. They're going to practice and watch all that mm -hmm. and behave just like that. So, uh, and I'm not just, you know, throwing the blame on anyone, you know, because yeah. I take full responsibility for my part and my yeah. share and all that. And I've been back before the Lord to ask him to forgive me. Yeah. But yes, I did pray for wow. my husband to come back. I mean, because I love the ground he walked on. <laughs> I mean, he was just my life, you know, and uh, it just took me a long time to overcome, you know, just letting go. Yeah. Just letting go. And of course, you know, he has moved on and, you know, has, you know, married or what have you. But, you know, I'm good with that, good. you know, and I bless both of them, you good. know, in the name awesome. of the Lord. Yeah. Yes. Because God took care of me uh, and my children, mm -hmm. you know, and I just have prayed for cleansing and all of that over us, mm -hmm. you know, because we want to aim them to be good in the Lord. That's what my aim is. Uh, was. So now your ministry is to go out and minister to other women who have gone through or are going through something similar? To, yes. Yeah. Uh, I, my, I feel now that the Lord has birthed a ministry in me mm -hmm. uh, with, because you know, like I said, that the greatest pain sometimes become our greatest blessing. Mm -hmm. And I feel that God has allowed me not that he meant for all this to happen, but sometimes God don't force his people to be who they need to be in him. Because okay. he gave us a free choice and will to choose him. Mm -hmm. But I do believe now that God has allowed me to overcome where I've been in my past to be able to let other women know that they can get beyond where they are yes. and that they can start over with the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And since uh, I know that having Christ as your personal savior is the purpose of us being able to do what we do in ministry. Yeah. It's all about him. It's all about and him. And not us. Now, yeah. I feel like I was mad with God for a long time because Did he you? didn't let my <laughs> husband come back. <laughs> but, you know, the Lord, he looks us on the heart mm -hmm. and he knows the heart, you know, and it's not that uh, you can't come back. It's the choice if you will come back. So how long has it been since you were divorced? Now, uh, it has been, what, um, 
22 years. Okay. Yes, because my son, he is 24 now, so mm -hmm. it has been 22 years. So at that time, I um, had two young babies. Yeah. And then I had did. my 13 year old daughter. Yeah. Um, but, you know, somehow or another, God knew that I was going to come to that place in my life yeah. because, see, He knew the foundation before He even put me in my mother's womb. Mm -hmm. He knew that before He even placed me in my mother's womb that I was going to experience this yeah. type of crisis in my life. Mm -hmm. But He was going to use all of that because He says in Isaiah 61.3 mm -hmm. that He takes those ashes and He turn them into beauty. Yes, He, he does. take all those messes. <laughs> And he made good of, of that, you know. And of he said he give you beautiful ashes, yes. the oil of joy for morning, yes, and garment absolutely. of praise for the spirit of heaven. Yes, <laughs> yes, he does. It, yes, he does. It. He does. I mean, <laughs> he takes all that stuff, and you know, he uh, uses that to bring about healing. And that chapter six to one. Uh, help me during that time. Mm -hmm. You know, it helps me over that depression. Yeah. You know, it just helped me to get up in so many ways. So wow. I just have a love for who the Lord is in the Old Testament because I was able to see his strength. I was able to see that he just prayed at me and he just loved me and my <laughs> children. Now, he loved my uh, ex, my husband too, mm -hmm. you know, but sometimes, you know, people's choices, you know, don't allow them to come back. Yeah. you know, to do what they need to do. But, you know, it's okay. And you still pray for him, And right? I still pray for him. Yeah. I, pray for, yeah. I still pray for him because sometimes he'll just come on my spirit and mm -hmm. I just pray for him. Yes, I still pray for him and I've taught the children to love him and to honor him and respect him and to love him. And I uphold him in the uttermost uh, way of integrity, you know, because uh, the church had nothing to do with what happened between yeah. us. You know, that was some messes that we had to clean up. Yeah. You know, and things of that such. Sorry that it had to happen that way. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, you know, uh, when there's a domineering or a controlling spirit there, you know, and you are made to feel like that, uh, you know, you are worthless or you are pushed down or you are not important and things of that such, and you lose your identity to that. Mm -hmm. And But I realized that was not him. It was a demonic spirit. It was yeah. an unclean spirit. So we have to realize what that is mm. and, and take authority over it. But at the same time, God holds us responsible too. Yeah. And I'll walk with him and the responsibility of what we're supposed to be doing in his word mm -hmm. and training and teaching our children in the way that they should go. And that we just not live any kind of regular lives in these marriages. That's yeah, so true. You know. So true. Wow. Praise God. Again, we are talking to S.A. Sullivan. She wrote a book, Hold Your Head Up, Your Self-Esteem Matters. So I tell you, we are really having a wonderful time. Please feel free to call in. It don't have to be about marriage. It be about anything that you're going through. If, if the enemy is coming against you in any kind of way, call in for prayer tonight. Right now, we're getting ready to go to back to Pastor Todd Curry and the Minister Choir. He's going to be singing, Thank You for Your Grace. Amen. Praise God.
Amen. Can we just lift our hands up to the Lord tonight and just thank him for his grace, that he's with us no matter what we go through in life, whether it's low self-esteem, whether it's hurt, divorce, whatever the case is, we thank God for his grace. His grace is sufficient for us. Amen. His strength is made perfect in our weakness. Um, Essie, I want to talk to you tonight about your book. And also, you have a book signing coming up. Yes, I do. I have a book signing, and it is scheduled for April uh, the 4th. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and so it'll be at Memoirs uh, Event and Catering. Okay. And that was, it's just right behind the Lighting Center off Pleasantburg. And what time is that going and to be? It's going to be from 2 to 6 o'clock. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> I'm so excited for you. I, I always get excited when I see God doing so many great and wonderful things in the lives of his people. <laughs> and you in particular, because you've Thank gone you. through so much. Thank you. But God is, like you said, God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. Yeah. And he is birthing something new. And beautiful, <laughs> you know, and I feel that he is a beautiful portrait of who, uh, that I am a beautiful portrait of who he is through yeah. Christ Jesus. And we have to know that we are beautiful in the Lord. Yeah. And it's not because of us, but it's because of him. Yeah. In the name of the Lord. And that is self-esteem, knowing that we are beautiful in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Internally. Internally, and then that is zoomed to the outside. In the name of the Lord. Well, I am, I am um, I'm proud of you. Thank you. I thank God for you. Thank you. I thank God for where you are, and, and I thank God for where he's carrying you. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you. Uh, I've heard it says that um, you, you don't look like what God has, you don't look like what God has in store for you. Your future is much better. Thank than you. what it is right now <laughs> in Jesus name. Amen. And so you want to be a life coach as well. I, I do because I believe that God has used these here 46 years or so to prepare ministry in me uh, yeah. because I accepted Christ, like I said, when I was 13, and mm -hmm. I would like to become a certified life coach, and I would like to minister to the whole person, you know, mentally, emotionally, physically, and financially, you know, yeah. to let them know that the whole body God is concerned about us as the whole body and how that we take care of ourselves and how we manage our money and, mm -hmm. and our tithe and our offerings and things of that such. So, yes, and to build, rebuild the mind of the person through mm -hmm. the word of the Lord. So. You know, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. had a dream. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And just hearing you, I see your dream become a reality as well. Yeah. Yes, and just to know that the Lord gave him that dream so we could all just sit together on this particular platform. <laughs> and I bless the name of the Lord for Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Yeah. And for the work that he was able to do through the Lord Jesus Christ. And we yeah. will forever honor him and his mm -hmm. legacy mm -hmm. and all that the Lord did through him. Yeah. So where can we find more information about your book? Well, you can find more information about my book. Um, I have a website through covenantbook.com. Mm -hmm. And then there you are able to find the book as far as Amazon and Barnes & Noble and Apple, Apple iTunes. So mm -hmm. those are two, three, peop three uh, places in particular. And also you are able to buy the book wherever books are sold. Awesome. Yeah, so it's all <laughs> around the globe. And two of the books have already sold in the UK, the United Kingdom. Wow. So I just bless the name of the Lord for that. Yeah. And I was able to publish the book through a covenant book yeah. out of Merle Inlet, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And so they were great publishers for me with the book. And the book came out in July of this year. That is amazing. Well, um, Essie, we had some people to call in tonight for prayer. And somebody called in, Miss Shirley called in, said uh, she wanted prayer for her stress yes. and health. And Miss um, Shannon called in uh, 
wanting prayer for her finances yes. and to keep God first. That's Amen. important, isn't it? It is very important because <laughs> we have to keep God first by all means because our lives take on meaning through the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because without the word of the Lord, I just don't see how people make it. Yeah. You know, and I'm so thankful now that in my older uh, years or in my golden years, I should say, <laughs> That the Lord uh, is with me, and I know that He with me, and yeah. I know that He loves me. He does, and I know that He loves everyone. Yeah, you know, and we may think that you know we can't start over, or we can't do this, or we can't do that. But I want you to know, God meets you right where you are. Yes, and He loves you dearly, and we have to do things according to the way He say do it. Yeah, because you know He does mean what he say when he say it. Amen. I told you, I told you, you're a teacher, you're a preacher, woman of God. Thank you. Thank you for well, being with us well, on Nightline and you sharing so your much. book with us. Thank you for and having thank me. thank you all for tuning in to Nightline for the first hour. We're asking you to come back for the second hour. Amen. We're going to have another awesome time in God. Will you close us out in prayer for these prayer requests that came in tonight? I will. I'll thank be glad to. Thank you so to. much. Thank you. Father God, we come to you, Lord, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We honor you for who you are, O oh God, and we lift you up as the highest God. Yes, Father. We thank you, Lord, for Nightline tonight, Lord. Thank we you, thank Jesus. you, Lord, for all these wonderful souls that have called huh, in tonight. My God, my God. Father God, you know all of thank their you, needs, Jesus. O God. Yes, Father. We ask that you meet everyone, Hallelujah. Lord God, according thank to you, your word and your way.